This program is sponsored in part by the Elizabethtown College Summer Scholarship, Creative Arts, and Research Projects. Elizabethtown College, educate for service. The right answer to your question. <laughs> the right answer to your question is you look on the archive, archive.org, and look for a paper by uh, Frank Wilczek <laughs> called, <laughs> called Physics in 100 Years. And I talk about, in that paper, I talk about what I think will be the future. And that, I think, could affect the other future. So you can, you know, that, that might be helpful. The paper Wilczek is telling the girl to read is the one that issues his challenge, which I hope I've convinced you is the path to seeing how Einstein's double revolution of modern physics, a quantum mechanics and relativity theory, is comprehensive and beautifully self-consistent, even if it's not finished. All we need to do to see the beauty is to rise to Wilczek's challenge and model physical reality, Einstein's real external world, as a block universe governed by adynamical global constraints in accord with no preferred reference rate. That is, all the violations of our dynamical sensibilities, aka mysteries, found in modern physics result from the fact that no one's sense experiences, per Einstein, can evidence any favored perspective on the real external world. As we saw in episode 3 for special relativity, if I, and those at rest with respect to me, alone measured the speed of light from a particular source to be C, then that would clearly indicate a favored perspective on physical reality, since Maxwell's equations tell us that the speed of light is c. Thus, one consequence of no preferred reference frame is an adynamical global constraint that everyone measures the same speed of light c. That is the light postulate of special relativity. Dynamically speaking, that is quite counterintuitive and leads to length contraction and time dilation. But whose meter sticks are really one meter long? and whose clocks really tick at a rate of one second per second. No preferred reference frame would tell us everyone's. How can that be? Special relativity reconciles that apparent contradiction via relativity of simultaneity and block universe per Wilczek's challenge. This adynamical explanation of the all at once view then resolves the mysteries of general relativity arising from dynamical explanation per the Anti view, episodes four, five, and six. No preferred reference frame leads to adynamical global constraints in a block universe. In episodes 7, 8, and 9, I showed mysteries arising in a non-relativistic theory of physics, quantum mechanics, are also due to adynamical global constraints resulting from no preferred reference frame. In special relativity, different relative velocities constituting different reference frames all measure the same speed of light, c. In quantum mechanics, different relative orientations of the stern gerlach magnets constituting different reference frames, all measured the same outcomes, plus one or minus one h bar over two. If Alice measured plus one, say for orientation alpha, and Bob measured negative 0.3 at beta, then we would know that Alice measured the true value of the angular momentum of her particle, while Bob only measured a component of the angular momentum for his particle. Thus, Alice's stern gerlach magnet orientation, her reference frame, would constitute a clearly favored perspective on physical reality. So another consequence of no preferred reference frame is an adynamical global constraint that everyone measures the same quantum outcomes, plus one or minus one h bar over two, for the spin singlet state. This means our conservation principle, adynamical global constraint, can hold only on average between different reference frames, with Alice saying Bob's results satisfy conservation of angular momentum on average, while of course Bob says the same thing about Alice's results. And this means there is no trial by trial conservation, that is, no causal mechanism or hidden variables to produce a dynamical counterpart for our adynamical explanation. Just as in relativity theory, no preferred reference frames leads to an adynamical global constraint in a block universe. While Smolin was right to say that Einstein's revolution is unfinished because we need to reconcile the formalisms of quantum mechanics and general relativity, he was mistaken when he said we don't understand quantum mechanics because it's wrong. And the real story, the point of view that I want to discuss today, is that in fact it doesn't make any sense because it's wrong. Quantum mechanics is the result of no preferred reference frame, just as relativity theory. And no preferred reference frame leads to adynamical global constraints in a block universe, which violates our anti dynamical bias. In other words, anthropocentrism arising from the anti view of physical reality 
may lead us to believe quantum mechanics is mysterious, some going so far as to claim that it's wrong. In fact, all of the mysteries of modern physics are easily resolved by ascending to the all-at-once view for Wilczek's challenge. In other words, we need to view physical reality like a crossword puzzle, rather than a game of chess. But if we rise to Wilczek's challenge and ascend to the all-at-once view of physical reality, we can accept that adynamical global constraints are in fact fundamental and therefore do not need to be explained dynamically. And again, the ultimate reason for our adynamical global constraints is no preferred reference rate. That is, to use Einstein's language, no one's sense experiences can provide a privileged perspective on the real external world. So the explanatory hierarchy is actually adynamical global constraints due to the egalitarian nature of our sense experiences giving rise to dynamical stories per classical mechanics about bodily objects that interact via the quantum exchange of momentum per quantum mechanics. So the take home message for the entire video series is that the mysteries of modern physics, being your quantum mechanics and your relativity theories, special and general, obtain because it is an unrecognized Kuhnian revolution. In other words, Thomas Kuhn published a book in 1962 called The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, in which he posited that science enjoys periods of stable growth punctuated by revisionary revolutions. So you have evolution uh, punctuated by revolution. And when you go from one paradigm to the next by a revolution, you have a failure of comparability. They're just incommensurate paradigms. Why is that the case here? The reason that we're having that trouble recognizing modern physics for what it is, is that we are expecting our dynamical sense experiences of the real external world to be fundamentally explicable in dynamical fashion. But modern physics is telling us that the most fundamental fact about our dynamical sense experiences is that they cannot provide a favored perspective on the real external world. That is, there's no preferred reference frame. Not that they are explicable in dynamical fashion. And, as it turns out, that means our dynamical sense experiences are only fundamentally explicable in a dynamical fashion in terms of constraints per Wilczek's all-at-once view. If you want to see how other mysteries in physics are resolved, for example, the measurement problem and the apparent contradiction between our dynamical experience and the block universe model of physical reality, just read our book, Beyond the Dynamical Universe.